Good evening, I'm Sarah Lebrek, and this is the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. His Royal Highness uh, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa chaired the weekly cabinet meeting at Ghadebiya Palace today. The cabinet congratulated His Royal Highness for being confirmed the tolerance shield from the Federation of World Peace and Love. On behalf of the cabinet, Deputy Prime Minister Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa expressed pride in this achievement, which reflects His Royal Highness's efforts in the humanitarian field to promote the values of peace, tolerance, and rapprochement between people despite uh, their religions and cultural backgrounds and the rejection of hatred, extremism and terrorism. The cabinet noted that the shield reflects the kingdom's achievements in this field during the prosperous reign of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. On the anniversary of the 87th Saudi National Day, the cabinet congratulated the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of Saudi Arabia, Saudi Crown Prince, Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defense, Prince Mohammed bin Salman bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud and the people of Saudi Arabia. The cabinet hailed the achievements and comprehensive development of Saudi Arabia at all levels under the leadership of King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud and wished the brotherly country further progress and prosperity. The cabinet also highlighted the deep-rooted historic relations between Bahrain and Saudi Arabia. Regarding housing services for citizens, the Prime Minister directed the Housing Ministry to meet the needs of Al Garaya village within the Northern City Project. His Royal Highness also directed the Ministry to speed up the implementation of Askar's housing services. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister ordered the uh, sermon all obstacles that delay the implementation of government uh, projects and find solutions that reduce the negative outcomes of those obstacles. His Royal Highness commended the role of the Ministerial Committee for Reconstruction and Infrastructure headed by Deputy Premier Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa in coordinating between government bodies on existing strategic and development projects implemented by the government. The cabinet approved the reorganization of Bahrain Polytechnic, where the organizational structure is composed of a chief executive officer and two vice presidents, one for academic affairs and the other for resources and information, each of which have three departments in addition to a department for quality management and measurement that follows the CEO directly, based on the recommendations of the Civil Service Bureau's memorandum. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to continue developing incentives and programs that encourage business owners to employ Bahrainis and also to increase training programs for the employed to make them more quali qualified for the labor market. The Cabinet discussed a proposal supporting foreign investment in the country that motivates global companies to invest in business activities according to specific standards and conditions. His Royal Highness appointed the Ministry of Industry, Commerce and Tourism to study the proposal with the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry. The Cabinet referred four draft laws to the Legislative Authority, prepared by the Representatives Council on organizing pensions and retirement benefits for Bahrain Defense Force and Public Security Officers, Social Security organizing pensions and retirement benefits for government employees, and on narcotic substances and uh, psychotropic substances. 
Under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and Chairman of the Kingdom's Economic Development Board, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, Deputy Prime Minister and Chairman of the Supreme Council of Information and Communication Technology, Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa, attended Amazon Web Services' first ever Middle East summit earlier today. Amazon Web Services brought the cloud computing community together for the Middle East's first ever AWS summit, a form for collaboration on cutting edge clouding technologies and applications designed to help businesses grow. During the event, a message from His Royal Highness the Crown Prince was delivered by the Director General of the First Deputy Prime Minister's Office, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, which stated that the capacity attendance of his event then uh, of this event, the first AWS summit in uh, the Middle East region is a testament to how Bahrain views the role of uh, cloud computing in transforming the way the public and private sectors use technology. The expansion of a regional uh, cloud capacity in the kingdom builds on its efforts over the past 15 years to transform the role of the public sector from the central drive of development to a regulator and an active partner with the private sector in developing the economy. He added that the use of technology fosters entrepreneurship, uh, drives innovation and accelerates uh, economic diversification in Bahrain. He added that having committed earlier this year to a national cloud-first policy, continuing to invest in digital infrastructure and providing the educational, regulatory and financial frameworks to utilize the potential of cloud computing. The Kingdom can help uh, drive it forward uh, the goals of sustainability, fairness and competitiveness that underpin its economic vision 2030. He said it is how the government will build new industries, evolve established ones, create new jobs and grow national economies. He added that, uh, the, uh, that uh, the using the cloud computing to place immediate cost-effective and scalable computing power in the hands of every business and household will serve as a further catalyst for the growth of businesses in Bahrain's economy. While attending the event, Deputy Prime Minister His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak noted his, right, his light at seeing the launch of the AWS Summit Bahrain. His Highness highlighted that Bahrain's growing ICT sector remains a key component of the kingdom's diversification efforts and that the sector's expansion supports other economic sectors such as business tourism. The Deputy Prime Minister also praised EDB's role in advancing the development of Bahrain's ICT sector, noting that the launch of Bahrain's Technology Week reflects EDB's ongoing commitment to supporting a sustainable development. His Highness went on to note that EDB, under the leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, continues to strengthen Bahrain's reputation as a pioneer in driving innovative technology investment across the region. The Chief Executive of the Bahrain Economic Development Board, Khalid al he said AWS's commitment or com com commitment to expanding its presence in the Middle East and North Africa, the MENA region, from Bahrain is a major enabler for technology and data-driven business across the GCC. This will benefit global corporates, SMEs, entrepreneurs and governments alike. The ability to store and share data at speeds the Gulf has never experienced before has the potential to help companies gain competitive advantages, allowing them to compete more effectively at a global level. Amazon Web Services is delivering the Middle East a world-class service with a young, technologically adept and growing population. The Gulf is well positioned to drive innovation in mobile application and digital services. Arumehi said he was eager to see how the region's entrepreneurs will make use of this exciting opportunity. The Vice President of Worldwide Public Sector Amazon Web Services, Teresa Carlson, spoke during the event and thanked the Kingdom of Bahrain for hosting AWS's first Middle East summit. Alongside the event, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa took part in the official opening of the Bahrain Technology Week Pavilion, the data center. The Bahrain Technology Week Pavilion will be open to the public from the 25th until the 29th of September from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. at Bahrain Bay and showcase a number of startup businesses as well as seminars with a focus on encouraging innovation.
And it was started by a meeting that Theresa Carlson had with His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, um, back in March 2015. Uh, and it, she was impressed by His Royal Highness's vision for the economy of Bahrain, what we have achieved and what he wanted to achieve going forward. And it kickstarted the discussions with Amazon Web Services. So it's been two and a half years since that date uh, for us to announce this. This is a landmark investment by Amazon Web Services. If you've seen the map of the world, you will see Amazon uh, you know, available in all of the continents except Africa and the Middle East. And so we're delighted that their first entry into this region comes in Bahrain. This is what they call a region which is the construction of what they call three availability zones, which means three data centers. And so it's a sizable capital investment into the Kingdom of Bahrain. We are so excited to make this announcement today about putting a region, our first Middle East region here in Bahrain. And it's been quite a journey working with the country, the Crown Prince, the EDB. And it's really, I would say, one of the big reasons that we made a decision to be here in Bahrain was how progressive that we've seen the government in terms of taking steps for new policy, for education and training. And really, they are walking the walk. In government today, they are actually taking the steps to move workloads to the cloud. So now we're here, we're gonna help create new jobs, we're gonna bring new partners to the region. The, the announcement uh, of the cloud will help the government to uh, be more responsive to the uh, government needs. Uh, deliver the services in a, in a speedy manner, um, uh, fail faster instead of waiting for a half a year, uh, one year and a half or two years of infrastructure development and then fail to any system, you can uh, immediately build up a system, uh, test it. If it doesn't work, you can change it. So fail fast without an initial investment and capex, uh, less resources required. And again, we can uh, build our capacity to uh, create jobs, uh, highly paid uh, jobs. Bahrain Defense Force Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa attended yesterday evening uh, a celebration held by the Embassy of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia in the Kingdom of Bahrain, marking the Saudi's 87th National Day. The event was also attended by Shura Council Chairman Ali Al Saleh, several ministers, senior officials, MPs and guests. The audience expressed congratulations to the Saudi Ambassador to Bahrain, Dr. Abdullah bin Abdul Malik Al Sheikh, and wished Saudi Arabia further progress and prosperity under the leadership of the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Salman bin Abdulaziz Al Saud. The celebration marked the deep-rooted relations between the two brotherly countries and people, which continues to witness development in all fields.
relationship between the Kingdom of Bahrain and Kingdom of Saudi Arabia extends over many, many years. And the, the family ties and the relationship between the people of Saudi Arabia and people of King, Kingdom of Bahrain, they are almost the same country. One country is the extension of the other country. And if we look at how strong is the relationship, we can look at many aspects. From the political point of view, the leadership are uh, strong uh, relationship together. From the economic point of view, there is a relationship between Saudi Arabia and Bahrain. Uh, in the oil industry, for example, the first pipeline in the whole region was built in 1945, uh, bringing crude from Saudi Arabia to Bahrain. And it's interesting to know that the first shipment of uh, Saudi crude was processed in Bahrain before, because Bahrain uh, was the first country to discover oil and also first country to have a refinery in the GCC. So when uh, oil was discovered in Saudi Arabia in 1938, the first shipment came by a barge to Zalak Beach in Bahrain to be processed by the refinery. And since then, the relationship in the oil and gas industry has been very strong. The business relationship is very strong. In every aspect, the relationship is strong. And we really are proud of the National Day of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia and wish them many, many happy returns. I take this opportunity, first of all, to wish, to convey my best wishes to the the government of uh, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia on their national day. And uh, this is an occasion I reflect on the very good relationship that our country enjoys with Saudi Arabia and wish this relationship to grow stronger in the coming days. Thank you very much. The Speaker of the Representatives Council, Ahmed bin Ibrahim Al Mullah, received today the President of the University of Bahrain, Dr. Yusuf Riyad Hamza, on the occasion of signing a memorandum of understanding between the General Secretariat of the Representatives Council and the University of Bahrain. Al Mullah affirmed the parliamentary support to education at the University of Bahrain, commending the role of educational institutions in providing various sciences and training youth and qualifying them for the labor market. He highlighted the government and the Representatives Council's keenness to support support education in the kingdom as it is the foundation of development in all societies. The Representative Council and the University of Bahrain signed a memorandum of understanding to enhance cooperation between them in the fields of training and education. The MOU provides uh, for enhancing cooperation between the General Secretariat of the S Council of Representatives and the University of Bahrain by training the Secretariat staff to achieve the objectives of establishing the Bahrain Center for Parliamentary Training. As part of the Kingdom's efforts to provide more educational services in all governance, work is underway to build a Joe Comprehensive Model School for girls in the southern governance. The school will be the first of its kinds in Bahrain, as it will include all three levels of education, elementary, intermediate and secondary, taking into consideration the unique requirements of each level. During his visit to the construction site, the Minister of Education, Dr. Majid bin Ali Al-Naimi, affirmed that the new school is part of the government's work plan to build 10 new schools in different governance between 2015 to 2018. According to the latest international educational standards, and modern environment friendly and energy saving specifications. He added that it affirms the support of the wise leadership to the educational march in the kingdom to achieve the ministry's strategic plans and development projects. And Naimi stated that the school will meet the needs of Joe area and the adjoining residential complexes. It will also provide transportation to students, services for students with special needs and Wi-Fi services to the entire school. Zhao School uh, will comprise of five buildings with 45 classrooms that will accommodate 1,700 students. Under the patronage of the Transportation and Telecommunications Minister, Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed, the Digital Content Conference was held in cooperation with the Ministry of Science and Information and Communication Technology of South Korea. The conference covered the main topics concerning digital content and the latest technologies in this field in the presence of representatives from 13 companies from South Korea. 
90 ICT companies from Bahrain took part in the conference as the participants discussed potential areas of cooperation such as animation, mobile education, radio broadcasting, computer graphics, movies, computer and mobile games. The transportation minister signed a memorandum of understanding concerning digital content with Korean Deputy Minister Hwan Jong-young.